Welcome to worship. I want you to take a moment to reflect on the unique gift you bring to this community. Maybe you bring your kind and gentle spirit. Maybe you bring your laughter. Maybe you bring your willingness to work hard at whatever needs doing. Maybe you bring your compassion for helping others. Maybe you bring your time that you spend cleaning up after us. Maybe you bring a generous financial donation. What do you have to bring today? Let us pray. Holy One, we welcome you here today and long for your presence in our midst. Make us reflections of your generosity and goodness in the world. We open our hearts up to you today. Amen. The word comes to us today from 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 15. Brothers and sisters, we want to let you know about the grace of God that was given to the churches of Macedonia. While they were being tested by many problems, their extra amount of happiness and their extreme poverty resulted in a surplus of rich generosity. I assure you that they gave what they could afford and even more that they could afford, and they did it voluntarily. They urgently begged us for the privilege of sharing in this service for the saints. They exceeded our expectations because they gave themselves to the Lord first and to us, consistent with God's will. As a result, we challenged Titus to finish this work of grace with you the way he had started it. Be the best in this work of grace in the same way that you are the best in everything, such as faith, speech, knowledge, total commitment, and the love we inspired in you. I'm not giving an order, but by mentioning the commitment of others, I'm trying to prove the authenticity of your love also. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Although he was rich, he became poor for your sakes, so that you could become rich through his poverty. I'm giving you my opinion about this. It's to your advantage to do this, since you do you not only started to do it last year, but you wanted to do it too. Now finish the job as well so that you finish it with as much enthusiasm as you started, given what you can afford. A gift is appreciated because of what a person can afford, not because of what a person cannot afford. If it's apparent that it's done willingly, it isn't that we want others to have financial ease and you financial difficulties but it's a matter of equality. At the present moment, your surplus can fill their deficit. So then in the new future, their surplus can fill your deficit. In this way, there is equality. As it is written, the one who gathered more didn't have too much, and the one who gathered less didn't have too little. about why the temple was built where it was in Jerusalem. And it's the story of two brothers. These brothers were both farmers and during their farming season, they had an abundance of a harvest. And when they were looking at their harvest, they thought about their other brother, one of whom was single and he thought about his married brother with his family and children and thought that he should share from his abundance in this harvest season 
so that that family would have enough. And the other brother who was married with children thought about his single brother and thought about how lucky he was that he had a family that would be there to take care of him and support him. And so he wanted to share his part of the harvest with his brother so that he would have enough into his old age. And so at night, in the midnight hour, the brothers would fill up a load, a bushel, from their harvest and take it over to their brother's house and leave it in their harvest, in their storage bin. And they did this for a number of nights in a row until it was the night of the full moon. And as they were on their way to switch their harvest, because they had noticed that it never seemed to be less. And so where they met there in the middle and saw each other taking that basket, that bushel full of grain to fill up the other's bed, they stopped, looked at each other, hugged each other, and were so grateful for the abundance they had been blessed with. And so the fable goes that spot where the brothers met, where they hugged and they learned about the generosity and abundance of each other. It's the place at which the temple was built. A lovely way to talk about why you would place a church somewhere. You chose it not because somebody gave you the land. But you made up this story, you told this tale of generosity and abundance, about family, about coming together, about sharing with each other. In our scripture today from 2 Corinthians, Paul is trying to mo motivate the Corinthians to share an offering with the saints in Jerusalem to support the work of Jesus, the mission of Jesus, by supporting the saints in Jerusalem. And so the Corinthians had promised to send money in support of the saints, but they didn't send what they had said they would. And so Paul is writing to them to encourage them to give the gift that they had promised. And in his pleading, he tells them, story of the Macedonians, who he says are very poor. But when they heard about the work of the saints and the need for money, they took what they had from their poverty and made an offering to the saints. They didn't have a lot to give, but they gave more than was expected of them, more than you would have thought they could have. They gave an abundance a surplus of generosity, as Paul says. And so he invites the Corinthians to think about how they give. Invites them to be generous. And he says, one of the reasons I'm inviting you to be generous is because the person that brought us together, the faith that draws us to each other, comes from the grace that Jesus gave us. A grace that he gave us through a life that was lived in poverty. I mean, think about Jesus' story. He's born to a single mother in a borrowed crib. He spends his life wandering from village to village, seeking shelter and food from those around him. On the night that he teaches us how to eat together, how to share a meal, it's in a borrowed room. And yet he taught us so much about generosity. He taught us about hospitality and expecting the graciousness of other people. For when he sent his disciples out to share the good news, he told them that they would know where to stay because they would be invited and welcomed in. That they didn't need to take with them money because in the town they entered, there would be someone 
who would provide them with what they needed, food and shelter. This season of the year begins a time when we start thinking a lot about generosity, about thankfulness and what we're grateful for, about gifts and what we have to give to others. So how do we think about what it means to be generous? When I was thinking about generosity, there's a movie, a clip on YouTube that was shared by Conrad Jagge, a Swedish man, who wanted to conduct a social experiment by posing as a homeless beggar and giving passer for buying the people money back. His plan was he would offer them, he would ask them for a donation, and when they gave him the coin, he would give them twice what he had been given. And so their first stop is a relatively affluent community. And he asks these strangers for one coin. And he asked, and he asked. And you see people turning away from him, saying, no, 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 I don't have anything. No one in that affluent community offered him money while he was begging on the streets. But rather than giving up, they decided to move their experiment to a neighborhood nearby, a poor area populated mainly by immigrants. And while begging in that neighborhood, in that poorer neighborhood, he had the opportunity to be rewarded by 34 strangers who gave him money. You can see these strangers giving him not just the one coin he asked, but what they found in their pocket, what they felt that they could give him. Reflecting on the experience, Conrad said, it's amazing how down I got after two hours in the wealthy neighborhood. I really got no reaction at all. It felt like they hated me. But in the poorer area, the people were so kind. It felt like it confirmed my existence. Out of their poverty, out of what seems like a lack of abundance to those who are wealthy, they gave to the beggar. Paul teaches us that, right? Paul teaches us that it isn't about the amount of money you have in your bank account. It isn't about the amount of money that you've collected. It's that you're giving for that grace that you have received. It's that you're giving for that need in front of you. And you know that when you've given from the need in front of you, someone will respond back when you are the one in need. Generosity. It's what we're called to do and be as Christians. We're called to give our time. We're called to give of our wealth. We're called to give of our kindness and compassion. We're called to share it with a world that is in pain and hurting. I want to end with a description of the way Puerto Ricans celebrate Christmas. They begin their Christmas celebrations in early November, kind of like us, right? Those Hallmark movies have started right now. Have you watched one already? Because they're new every Saturday and Sunday night. In Puerto Rico, the Christmas celebration begins in early November and ends on February 2nd. And the Puerto Ricans practice a tradition that they call Tarandas. The Puerto Rican community 
is known for their abundance. Even in the midst of poverty, they love to laugh. They love to party and sing. They love to eat. And so during Christmas, they practice parandas, meaning that a group of people will gather together with their instruments and they will go to someone's house for a party. At that house, they will sing and dance and laugh. And the person, the host at that house, is always invited to feed them. And what they feed them is a soup, a rice-based soup, asopayo. This rice-based soup has whatever proteins available, chicken, pigeon, shrimp, peas if you're a vegetarian. And as that group gathers, if your soup pot was very small, because it's soup, you can always add more water, more broth as more people come so that everyone will have a bit to eat. As they say, donde coma dos, coma tres. Where two can eat, three can eat. That when that group shows up, they're met with generosity, but they bring with them generosity. They bring with them song and dance and laughter. And for this season of Christmas, this long season, where they celebrate for months, they celebrate generosity for months, where everyone can share a bowl of soup. Everyone can sing a song. And maybe that's what we're called to do, to remember that we are called to be generous, that we always and make a little bit of extra soup that we can always feed more than just ourselves. Amen. I invite you to take in a deep breath, to breathe in and to release your breath. I invite you to breathe in generosity and to breathe out love. God, you remind us of our abundance, how our surplus can be filled with another's deficit. We look around and see so many deficits. We see the mothers and children who struggle for food and shelter. We see the veterans who are on the streets in need of shelter and care. We see the people displaced by storms. We feel for all those who have been hit by one storm after another. We see those infected with COVID-19, the skyrocketing rates of illness are rising exponentially, and the deaths continue to rise and the hospitals continue to fill. We see businesses closing and its jobs are lost. And yet you remind us of our abundance how our surplus can fill another's deficit into these deficits and many more that are unnamed. Show us your surplus. Change the hearts and minds of our elected leaders so that they can work from abundance and generosity. God, out of your grace and generosity, look now on the people who, are weighed, who weigh down our hearts. Be with our friends and family, our community. Be with the people who are sick, the people who are lost and alone, the people who are anxious and fearful. Be with the people who are grieving 
and frightened. We lift up to you those who are on our hearts now. God, continue to share your amazing grace and abundant generosity with this community, this country, and this world. As we pray together the prayer that Jesus shared with the disciples, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship today. I invite you to give to the ministry and work of this congregation, this community of faith, that you may share your generosity and abundance with us, that we can continue this ministry. Let us pray. We give in grateful thanksgiving for all that God has given us. In this upside-down world of the gospel, we measure our wealth not by what we have, but by what we can give away. Let us give away generously in this offering to bless your church, your people, your creation. Amen. And if nobody told you today that I love you, remember that God loves you and always will that Jesus loves you and always will, that I love you and always will. May you be generous and compassionate this week. Amen. <laughs>